of sacred. The presence of eminent personalities make the forum shine like a galaxy. Our Nehru College of Aeronautics and Applied Sciences acknowledges and value your esteemed presence. May I invite Dr. P. R. Balaji, Dean Academic Affairs to deliver the welcome address. Very good morning to one and all present here. What a wonderful Saturday morning to begin with. Today, we were supposed to have our CEO and secretary, Dr. Krishna Kumar, to preside over the function. But it's so unfortunate, or should I call it fortunate, that there are four similar webinars are going on. And there are some people from the Ministry of Human Resources from New Delhi. They are also addressing. So he had no other choice. He had to go there to preside over the function. But however, today I am really delighted to have the very first webinar from the BAC and BBA department. And that too, on the trends of the recent trends in the aviation industry. The most respected chief guest of the day, Dr. G. Prabhagaran, the head of the department from Remo International College of Aviation from Chennai. All the head of the departments, the principals of other institutions, my students, my faculty members, and all the invited guests. I extend a very hearty welcome to this first webinar of the BAC department in this academic year. Dr. G. Prabhagaran the head of the department of the Remo International College of Aviation has agreed to come and share his thoughts of the recent trends which is happening in the aviation industry by sparing his valuable time. And though I have not met him earlier, this is the very first interaction which I'm going to have with him in the virtual platform. Sir, on behalf of Nehru College of Aeronautics and Applied Sciences, I extend a very warm welcome to you to this webinar. And I also thank you for accepting our invitation and being with us. I sir, also I extend, that's... thank you, sir, thank you. And, and I also extend my welcome to all the faculty, to all the principals, to all the students who are present here, and also to all the invited guests, those who are on the webinar. Dear friends, I have been in the aviation industry for almost more than three decades, and I have seen the ups and downs of the aviation industry. The trends keep changing, and we need to keep ourselves updated with the recent trends. As I always mention, aviation industry is an ocean the changes, whether it is going to be in terms of technology, whether in terms of the passenger growth, it's very, very enormous. As I said, the industry has seen both ups and downs. You would have seen last night a mishap which has happened, a very, very sad incident. Our Air India Express, which was flying from Dubai to Kohli Code, it met with an accident as it landed in the Kohli Code airport. It slid away from the runway and it had to fall into a valley, a 50 feet deep valley, including the pilot. There are about 16 people or 17 people 
queer death and almost 123 passengers were injured seriously injured but this is one side of the aviation industry but when you talk about every day there are 150000 flights take off and land worldwide and this kind of mishaps are a very very meager negligible number the reason why i bring this topic now since we are talking about the recent trends everything this will be the fresh in our mind but this is a part and parcel of the aviation industry and when compared to any other transport industry this accidents are very very meager and very negligible number in the aviation industry as i said i have been in the industry for the most than 3 decades i have seen the small aircraft coming in and i have seen how the growth now even an airbus 380 which carries more than 540 passengers with tons of cargo it's also there that is the kind of growth in terms of the aircraft in terms of the pass carrying passenger capacity and now recently before the covid they did a flight which flew 19 hours non stop all the way to sydney from london and again these are all the developments in the aviation industry almost a decade ago i can say we used to have concord flights the concord flights are no more there it's all grounded the concord flights we call it as the supersonic flights faster two times faster than the normal jet planes and it used to cross transatlantic in 3 hours in that is only british airways and air france used to have the concord flights people those who really care for time they the business people they used to fly on the concord the concord flight in generally the aviation industry we call it as steel tube it's a very very narrow bird we'll say a narrow narrow steel bird which had about 120 seat capacity and you don't have reclining seats like first class at present you have 180 degree reclining seats where you convert into a bed you sleep but on a concert space is a constraint the smaller the aircraft the faster it goes that's why we call it as supersonic and the supersonic flights used to travel transatlantic british airways london to new york london to washington they had flights going morning and evening and it takes only 3 hours to cross transatlantic again 7 and 1/2 hours flight by a normal jet plane and similarly air france used to have flights to new york washington as also in the west coast to san francisco but the concord flight it's grounded why for the safety reasons though it was a supersonic it was flying at the fastest in the air but there was a small mishap and finally the civil aviation authority decided to ground all the flights for the reason safety of the passenger now after that the industry is showing tremendous changes you talk about now the airports have become very modern all the sophisticated instruments are there all the airports are now connected with aero bridge and they also have the machines called cus and cue okay our mba students will know the cus the common user self service machines especially during this covid time it is coming very very handy and the next it's going to be biometric already airports like dubai istanbul and london they have introduced the biometric systems see the biometric system is your thumb impression is recorded and once it's recorded it's stored in the system and it is passed on to the immigration and customs and wherever you go all you will have to do is instead of standing in the long queue you can go into the biometric line just put your thumb impression immediately it captures your data and if everything is clear it allows you the arm gate will open it allows you and it is very very speedy the aviation industry iata is working on one more program called spt simplifying passenger travel as i said india is going to be the number one aviation market by the year 2030 after china and america so what is going to happen now there are so many passengers those who are going to travel and with the limited infrastructure what we have 
how do we speed up the check in procedures people standing in the long queues okay the aircraft we need to as the passengers go simultaneously we like to increase the infrastructure also as well today the government and the public sector need to have such kind of money to also do the expansion simultaneously sometimes it may not be economically feasible and possible so what do we do the iata is planning to come out with a simplified passenger travel and what is a simplified passenger travel is everything is going to be converted into biometric very soon we will be having smart cards and the passports are going to be biometric and then it will be very easy for your check in procedures and for your immigration not only that your security is going to be everything through scanning it is going to i you like to just walk through the infrared rays your face will be captured it will be recognized and if it is clear you can just walk through the security you will not have a physical check a frisking everything is going to be through an x ray where it's a pathway you will have to walk through these are all the aviation is planning why because the aviation industry is going to grow in the next 10 years and it is go the growth is going to be very enormous so these are all the trends which is going to happen in the aviation industry and today to add more to it we have with us our very senior person in the uh, aviation industry as well as in the academics we have dr g prabhagaran with us who has kindly consented to address our students and our faculties sir i once again extend a very warm welcome to you for this webinar and i also as a head of the institution i personally thank you for accepting an invitation and being there and i once again welcome all the head of the departments the principals the students and the invited guests for this lovely webinar on a saturday morning i over to the mc over to the host please thank you thank you sir for your sweet and well lit words of welcome acquiring wisdom of knowledge in life is the greatest wealth we have in our midst an eminent personality with a very high profile of vast experience in this field i now request ms m ilakya assistant professor from our department to enter the profile of our chief guest A pleasant good morning to one and all. I am honored and it is my privilege to introduce our today's chief guest to you. Dr. G. Prabhagaran has got his post graduation and doctorate in Satyapama University, Chennai. He worked for Indian Air Force as senior non-commissioned officer for 18 years. After working in Indian Air Force, he worked as an assistant professor in Department of Aeronautical Engineering in Hindustan Institute of Technology and Science, Chennai. and head of the department of aeronautical engineering in jpr engineering college chennai apart from being a professor he was also a coordinator for tifac core in aircraft maintenance during his course of tenure he has produced many university rank holders he has given many guest lectures in some of the famous institutions in chennai like uh, velamal institute of technology and satyabhama university He is the editor and reviewer for some online journals. He has presented and published papers in more than thirty national and international journals. Dr. G. Prabhagaran is a life member in various national and international professional bodies. During his eighteen years of precious time in Indian Air Force, he has completed more than twenty specialization courses in relation with Indian Air Force. Currently Dr G Prabhagaran is working as a professor and head in department of aviation and management in Remo International College for Aviation Chennai We welcome you sir to address the future pillars of the aviation field Thank you ma'am for the nice introduction What you do today can improve all your tomorrows So I am very honored and very proud to call our today's chief guest dr g prabhagaran professor and head department of aviation and management remo international college of aviation chennai to address everyone so we welcome you sir 
Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, good morning, sir. And uh, I'm very glad to present uh, in this uh, webinar uh, in front of you. And I'm, very, I'm proud that to present in front of all these dignitaries and our uh, beloved students. First of all, I'm very thankful to uh, Dr. Balaji Sir in Yaro uh, College and uh, the management. I'm very proud and uh, proud to say that I'm very thankful to you all. Uh, dear dignitaries, uh, dear principals, HODs, and deans, and students. I am Dr. Prabhakaran. I have completed uh, 18 years of uh, Air Force uh, work uh, in uh, all, almost all over the places. Uh, especially, I feel very proud to work there and work for the country. And I was the, uh, the key person for all engineering, uh, especially in avionics, maintenance, and engineering works for airborne and ground equipment. Further, I completed my PhD, MTAC and PhD in Satyabama University. I joined in a Hindustan University uh, in the aeronautical department and I worked there and initially I started as a uh, assistant coordinator for HL training program for uh, managers. More than 22 courses I have coordinated as well as I was taking the uh, uh, classes in avionics, aircraft systems and instrumentations, microprocessor and applications and uh, aircraft maintenance engineering. So further, I have been called from uh, Jaipur Engineering College for, uh, to take over as uh, head of the department from 2009 to 2018. Uh, for 10 years, I worked there and I produced uh, almost uh, in every batch that uh, gold medalist and the silver medalist and I produced a uh, number of uh, rank holders from that college. Further, I moved to uh, Remo International College for uh, of aviation and I am working as a head of the department. Here, sir, I, uh, your, uh, our dean, sir, as, as our dean, uh, Dr. Balaji, sir, has expressed his, uh, his enthusiasm and uh, he welcomed me uh, in, uh, in a way. I'm so impressed and very happy, sir. And I'm very uh, glad to meet you all here. So I'm uh, once again, I'm telling you thanks and uh, thanks from my bottom of my heart. And I'm going to start my session here. Can I start my session, sir? Yes, sir, we can start, sir. Thank you. Okay, sir. I'm just starting. Can you can you able to see this? Uh, my uh, PPT, sir. Hello. Hello, Hi, sir. Uh, can you able to see my uh, this one uh, uh, presentation? Shall I go ahead? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can start. Okay. So I am going to take uh, and uh, speak about uh, recent trends in aviation industry. So. <coughs> First of all, we will go from that recent trends in aviation industry. First of all, I want to say a few words about the aviation and the aviation industry, and then we will go for the trends, the normal trends in the aviation industry, and then I will go for the recent trends in aviation industry. Once again, I am telling you good morning, and aviation is a branch of science that focuses on the study and the design of aircraft. Aviation is the activities surrounding mechanical flight and the aircraft industry. Industry in the sense, we can say that, that, that aircraft and maintenance and the airline airport management and air traffic control is the main role is deals with. Aviation science includes all the arrangements which are required to keep the airlines and airports running safely and efficiently. This is the main things, but yesterday's uh, happenings is a uh, 
just minor because in the uh, recent advancements, these type of accidents are very, very, very minor. But after, because the, all the facilities, even uh, that uh, developments uh, in the recent developments has uh, made that, uh, that it, there should not be any accident. This has happened very, you can say that uh, it is un very, very unfortunate. Okay. Here, in this uh, accident also, we can say that uh, how the type of uh, runway is available in our country. There is uh, one of the code uh, runway is one of the uh, uh, tabletop runway. So uh, with the heavy rides, the flight has uh, landed. But we have to see what are the uh, technical faults or uh, pilot faults or any other things we have to go through after the investigations. So this safely and efficiently meant for even that should not be happened to even a single person in the aviation industry. That is only our main cause and in the aviation industry deals with it. So here are aircraft referred to all sorts of commercial and military aircrafts. I'm going to talk about it. That is the airplanes, helicopters, gliders, and also the military jets. Now I can go for uh, aviation industry. What is the aviation industry? This is for the student's sake. I want to give you an expression that is, it encapsulates the development, operation, and management of aircrafts. So while the common perception about the aviation industry used to think about that uh, pilots and aerostats are in the aviation industry, but there are numerous others equally significant job options that industry cannot function without. You can say from in-flight trainers, global business. It generates that economic growth creates jobs and facilitates international trade and tourism. The airport industry also supported a total of 62.7 million jobs globally. At the end of this session, I will tell you what are the jobs related to uh, aviation industry where this BSc Aviation, BSc Aeronautical Sciences and BBA in Airline Airport Management and MBA in Airline Airport Management can go for uh, getting the placements. So the aviation industry, the global aviation industry is having a graceful and elegant bearing to grow at a healthy 5.6 CAGR, that is a carbon average growth rate for the next 15 years. We are expecting while major conventional mature markets such as the US and the Europe will witness a significant fall in the market share from 61% to 51%, but the emerging markets in China, India, and the Middle East offer a great growth potential. So the expectations in aviation industry will grow uh, in an enormous manner so our aviation people or the students have got a lot of opportunities to work in the aviation industry. Uh, one point, near about 1.7 uh, trillion uh, dollars in US economic activity and more than 10 million US jobs are available in aviation industry. Commercial air travel is safest form of intercity transportation in the United States. So our uh, deans are also told that same thing that uh, that fully air travel is taking place in US and European countries, where, and this will also emerge from in our uh, India, China, or the Middle East side, so that the uh, potential growth will go alive uh, in anything. So every day, US airlines transport more than 2.4 million passengers and more than 58,000 tons of cargo is moving. The aviation sector in India currently contributes $72 billion in a, to GDP, that is a gross domestic product. So India has 464 airports and airstrips, including the commercial and military aircrafts. 
of which 125 airports are owned by Airport Authority of India. These 125 Airport Authority of India airports manage closely to 78% of domestic passenger traffic and 22% of the international passenger traffic like uh, uh, Minambakam, uh, Palam Airport, and Kolkata and Bombay. And Trichy also now became an uh, international airport. So, total 22% of internal passenger traffic and aerodromes are available. So, that much passenger traffic also it increases. The trends in aviation industry, if you want to talk about that, if you go for the history, the passenger air transport became relevant around 1940. The trends in aviation industry compared to other transport modes, you can see like uh, uh, road transport and the trains, the shipping, the traffic increases at a high rate in civil aviation. It's a relatively recent phenomenon says that the number of passenger transports on civil aviation or used civil aviation, aviation aircraft are higher and higher if you see from the analysis from after 1980. The following aspects contribute to the trends in the aviation industry, that is, the trends in passenger passenger numbers and the total flights. We have to talk about these three trends and then we will go for the recent aviation, I mean recent trends in the aviation industry. The next trend, the trend in engine development and efficiency. The trend in understanding impacts of aviation in on atmosphere and climate. We have to see these major trends. This is the top trends that created and globally it has uplifted this air, I mean, airline industry. So first you can see that the trend in the passenger numbers and the total flights. So the civil aviation for widespread transport of uh, citizens did not really start before the Second World War because before that never, they never used this uh, uh, aircraft or uh, any air traffic. Before the aircrafts were mainly constructed for military purposes only. So in World War, we have used that not aircrafts in India, we have used that uh, not aircrafts also. So after the war, many qualified pilots are available and still many planes suited. Transport of passengers to war was their first boom in civil aviation at the beginning, particularly in the United States. So it became a common trend in all the industrialized countries like India, China, and Middle East and European countries. It has started blooming. Uh, following pictures give an impression. You can see this one, Boeing 247 as a civil aircraft produced in the United States since 1933. So this aircraft besides from three staff members, so totally 10 passengers, including that three uh, staff members, total 10 passengers can able to travel. The next one, the Junkers 90 was available in Germany since 1938, designed for 40 passengers. It was one of the largest passenger aircraft before the war, but never produced in large in numbers because that time, the, they were not uh, uh, opting this uh, air routes. So only that the industrialists, the big businessmen, were traveling. And that time, the advancement was not available in the tech. I mean, technically, and so the accidents were taking place during these periods. So nobody was preferring that maximum number was not preferring for. You know, I mean, uh, using this air traffic. So the Douglas C4 Skymaster or DC4 has been produced since 1942 in the United States for 30, 30 to 40 passengers. So the capacity is 40 to 42 40 passenger capacities, capacities available, including the staff members. It began together with the Douglas C DC3, famous as a Russian bomber, during the blockade of uh, Berlin from <coughs> Berlin. So this has been introduced. So that time also, this the air route was not useful and it was not getting boom. Ten years later, the Douglas DC-7, produced 1952 to 1958, was the biggest propeller aircraft with a space for 100 passengers and the last major piston engine powered plane 
coming just a few years before the advent of the jet aircraft. Though that, uh, of course, the production was not available, but equally there was a lot of uh, propeller aircraft like uh, um, AN-32, AN-12, this have been uh, Avro. These type of aircraft were still we are using it propeller aircraft, but there won't be any much uh, production were taking place after 1958. But India is using so many propeller aircraft for faster uh, movement. The trends in engine development and efficiency. The most faster aircraft used nowadays are jet engines, turbojets and turbofans, which dominate the civil aviation since 1960s. So the development has taken place in 1960s only the most passenger was ready to move on, the, I mean, using the air roads. While airlines have been for some decades under the authority of the respective states, latest with the international liberation of the markets, the consumption of fuel became an important factor, important factor in the competition. So the fuel consumption also, of the, uh, which degrades that uh, revenue generation in airlines and airports. So we, uh, that engine uh, development is very, very uh, essential for development of uh, airline industry and aviation industry. So they came on the development on engine development. That is, uh, that's why after became uh, uh, that uh, turbojets and turbofans, technically they introduced that uh, fuel um, uh, what you can say that uh, uh, fueling of uh, fuel efficiency aircraft, we can use that a uh, lot of uh, advancements in this uh, fuel saving operations in this uh, jet engines and turbo turbofans. Therefore, not only that environment but also the economic interest drive the permanent improvements of engine efficiency. Once the engine efficiency is moved and the fuel uh, consumption is uh, reduced, then only you can able to uh, introduce these aircraft in a commercial way so that the revenue generation is the main uh, important uh, expectations from all aviation industry. So however, these improvements never compensated for the increase in passenger kilometers flown and therefore fuel demand and carbon dioxide emissions are taking place. So we have to uh, take a precautions for the carbon dioxide emissions in the air. So the development has made in a engine efficiency in the recent days and the development has gone into a, a very good manner and the engine development and efficiency has uh, improved in the recent days and the aviation growth also increasing enormously. The trend in uh, understanding the impacts of aviation on atmosphere and the climate. So in the late 1960s, aircraft engineers thought about the construction of a supersonic air aircraft fleet. At this time, the understanding of atmospheric process was sufficiently advanced in order to see the risk in such planes. Because when the supersonic flights has been ta taken place, yeah, for the passenger aircraft, so it gives some uh, <coughs> problems because the supersonic feet we have to take above the 30 to 40 thousand feet. Then only the um, uh, supersonic feet uh, operations will be successful because that air route will be in a shortened way because of this uh, supersonic flight. But at the same time, the comfort of the passengers is not available because when you go or uh, fly above the 40 to 50,000 feet, the 40 to 50,000 feet, the uh, problems will create to the passengers come out. So though we are having the pressurization systems, air conditioning systems, this uh, uh, hypothesis of problems will will be uh, more to the passengers than the uh, pilots who are in the cabin. Because the cabin can be, able, I mean, uh, the uh, pilot cabin can, can be able to uh, uh, produce because the pilot is uh, using that uh, jackets and uh, uh, avoid this uh, hypothesis 
hypoxia problems and uh, any uh, healthy problems in the above for 32, I mean 40 to 50,000 feet. But that cannot be uh, made available to all the passengers. So, because of this uh, uh, technical problems, this particular uh, supersonic fleet were not uh, introduced till now. Uh, and uh, recently, you might have seen that Sukhai 35, they introduced their uh, uh, supersonic fleet, uh, I mean, uh, again, in Russia. But that also still in the investigation to take the passengers in, a pass I mean, in the uh, fleet. So scientists discussed the potential impact on the ozone layer, which raised strong concerns before a wider development of the technology was seriously approached. So because of that, the passenger aircraft in supersonic, I mean, uh, passenger supersonic aircraft fleet is not at all emerged till now, but it is under the investigation to bring in the uh, uh, future uh, future decades. So it is possible because that because of that one only the, uh, when, uh, the potential impact on the ocean layer is taking place by the scientists for investigations. So this will be, uh, I think they can um, able to succeed their investigations and bring the aircraft with the supersonic fleet in the resuming future uh, decades. So that can be understood. <laughs> Since the supersonic fleet was never developed, also for the technical and economic reasons, attention of science shifted in the 1990s more to ozone development in the upper trans, I mean, troposphere and the greenhouse effect in general. So the ozone layer is a strong greenhouse gas, so that this greenhouse effect is in generally we are being introduced in this after the 1990s. Besides from easier to estimate direct carbon dioxide emissions, in particular the impacts of the condensation trial and potentially developing the cirrus clouds have been of special interest so that the investigation is taking place in the, uh, the past days and still that investigation is going on in this uh, green effects. Now the recent trends in the aviation industry, we can go for it. First, we can go for the top 10 recent trends in the aviation industry we can able to go through. First, we will see that what are the recent top 10 recent trends in the aviation industry, that is airport ownership transition, number one. So next one is the airport cities and aero portfolios. Location-based services, consolidations, digital security, self-operation, traffic growth, integration and standardization, digital transformations, green airports. These are the 10 top trends in aviation industry. I'm doing this investigation also, as well as I'm doing my job in the I mean, investigation. I'm taking this 10 uh, uh, recent trends and taking it and I am doing my investigations and analysis. So the same thing only I'm going to introduce, which will be more uh, compact to you and it will be more explanatory to you. So the airport ownership transition, the airports are witnessing a transition in the ownership. You might have seen that how this downfall and going, I mean, upcoming the, uh, I mean, uh, uh, airlines. You might have seen that many airlines we have seen in India also, then many airlines are coming and they are vanishing. And some uh, some uh, new airlines are also introducing and they are going on. How they are going to uh, keep this airliners for long and pro, uh, doing their business in the uh, future days. So the management structure and ownership and the management structure from public to public private partnerships to a concession based operator on behalf of the owner and finally to fully private airport. So nowadays the Indian government also they are uh, trying to uh, privatize the airports and privatize the uh, airline I mean, aviation industry. So we have to see what are the uh, things, how uh, it can be able to uh, play a role in the um, uh, upcoming or development of aviation industry. This creates opportunities for larger investments towards the airport development. In turn, allows the suppliers to penetrate deeper in the market with both existing and new products. So, it, 
then only we have to offer, I mean, yeah, this privatization or the uh, fully privatization of airports will give you the larger investment. Once the larger investment taking place, so larger revenue is produced and more number of jobs also introduced in the future days. So <coughs> the next one, airport cities and uh, aerotropolis. Airports are transforming into a low I mean, social hub where the passengers can meet, rest, and experience an increasing array of airport services. So they cannot go out of these airport, uh, airports to go for uh, any uh, processing or any, uh, uh, you can say that, uh, uh, purchasing and you can go for uh, any food purposes. But in, uh, in airport itself, we have to make a social hub so that the revenue cannot go out of this airport. The, I mean, uh, airports or uh, airlines uh, uh, from the uh, passengers, passenger sites. So suppliers that form partnership with the service providers are those that diversify into the airport industry are able to introduce new platforms that can integrate with the other sectors and provide a seamless and connected array of service. So whatever the, uh, I mean, uh, the things are required by the passengers, so the suppliers can be able to opt for their demand. So uh, they should have that very good connectivity between all the service providers from airport to airport. They should have an so that they can be able to uh, do their business in a our business and marketing in the airport side. <coughs> so location-based services. So it is targeted marketing, including the information on store locations and discounts in the airports, and together with the new purchasing models such as online purchases and off-site delivery of goods will lead to increased non-aeronautical revenues for airports. So suppliers have introduced the passenger tracking and flow management nowadays systems and integrated personalized technology using Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, that identify the location of the customers in relation to your store and provide the information. So here I am giving you one by one in a in a airport and a passenger side, and at the same time the non aeronautical revenue of airport, how it can be able to increase, and one by one we will say it in the next slides. So the consolidation in the face of the airport expansion and growing competitions among the suppliers. Suppliers are consolidating their, their position in the industry by pushing their products into exciting markets to gain a sizable market presence. So suppliers are very, very important in the uh, airport industry as well as each and everyone, but the revenue generation will be coming, coming out from the suppliers. The suppliers build on the success by broadening into a new market region or developing or and marketing new products in their exciting regional presence. Yeah, according to the regional presence in the sense, according to the, the airport to airport, the marketing uh, trend is different and the new products are uh, uh, taken place by the passenger in the different airports and the different uh, strategy, uh, strategies are used by the suppliers. A strong consolidation strategy in the foundation to diversifying into other market segments also. So the digital security. So now we have to go for a security at the airport and the aviation industry. The state of art technology has been used to develop the advanced concepts such as walk through security to reduce the passenger wait times while biometrics can be used to automate verification process and reduce the staffing. So our uh, dealer has told already uh, about that biometrics. So I am skipping to that security systems have rapidly become a major trend in the airports. So security is the main uh, safety and security. I mean, security at the airport side is very, very important in the uh, aviation industry. So otherwise, the whole marketing and the business will collapse. So suppliers have moved swiftly, swiftly to incorporate 
cyber security services into the IT solutions. Nowadays, the missing baggage is also, we can go for a, a biometric way so that any missing packages can be able to identify so that the spending of money will be reduced. So but even you can use that Wi-Fi, I mean, uh, biometric strips will be uh, tied to the passengers and the packages so that we can able to read, I mean, uh, collect the packages. So it will not go in the, uh, uh, somebody can pick up this uh, packages in a, uh, without knowing. And sometimes any uh, thief, I mean, any stolen, uh, stolen people will be taken out that packages and stolen and uh, go out from the airport area will be given with the alarm. So these are all things are developing in the uh, recent days. and. Uh, I'm uh, as a, I'm opting the uh, student to go for this safety. I mean, digital security platform on your final year project, so that take a keen interest on this one to develop this type of a uh, uh, final year project, so that this they, uh, this type of a projects will improve in their career as well as they can learn and they can introduce uh, this type of uh, new trends to the airports. So in you know, the recent days, uh, we have also uh, uh, produced one uh, um, final year project that is the manual marshalling to yeah, digital way using the drones. So drone can be able to lift the uh, uh, displays and it will bring the aircraft from the uh, end of the runway to the marshalling point or the parking bay through a drone by operating a uh, digital signal so that in so because the digital signal can go nearby to the aircraft and it can give you give the signal instead of you uh, during that uh, darkness or you can say that uh, visibility condition low visibility conditions this will be more more useful in the um, in this uh, future days so we have developed uh, uh, such a uh, uh, marshalling i mean digital marshalling by using these uh, drones so one of the we, i wanted uh, i am encouraging you the students to develop uh, like this digitalization in the airport side or airport industry which can improve that uh, safety and security at the airport side so the traffic growth driven by the emerging middle class and passenger traffic has doubled every 15 years the forecast has confirmed that this will this trend will continue and doubling or tripling the passenger growth the, this result in the necessity to upgrade the airport infrastructure because the passenger growth increased in a, a double or triple time. So the infrastructure to be in, um, uh, upgraded and that new uh, new uh, upgradation in a digital site to be increased so that the passenger traffic can uh, be handled very smoothly. The Air Pacific, Asia Pacific region has witnessed a booming air travel populations. At the starting of this uh, uh, seminar, I told that uh, the booming uh, of air travel population is are the passenger traffic is increased in uh, industrial uh, industrial countries like uh, India, China, Middle East. So this will be Air Pacific, uh, Asia Pacific region will will have the uh, enormous uh, booming air travel populations. But so the air traffic also will increase and the number of airports will be introduced in uh, uh, large manner. So as a result, the suppliers have targeted this region to gain the market presence, thus presenting the opportunities for growth. So everywhere the suppliers only is uh, may have a main role in tie up with the air aviation industry to undertake the massive infrastructure upgrade projects. Companies form consortiums with the service providers from different segments. So integrated systems allow the airports. So here, integrate, integration and standardization of the airports. So the integrated systems allow the airports to use standardized platforms, which seamlessly connect with the platforms of other suppliers and with the third party applications. So suppliers understand the importance of integrated platforms, partnership with the other suppliers, enable them to provide end-to-end -end platforms that integrate different airport segments.
So suppliers also start to mergers or acquisitions to include the new platforms into their portfolio and market their services are as airport integrators. So next one is the digital in the transformation. The level of digitalizations in airports is growing quickly and supports trends such as increasing automations and targeted passenger services. So this will lead to a connected airport where the control center has visibility across all operations and can better monitor and manage performance against key performance indicators. So the suppliers provide a range of analytic service that integrate with all airport operations and engages airport operators to find ways to provide a seamless connectivity throughout the airport. The end one, with high standards to limit the noise and air pollutions, the airports will increasingly focus on generating the energy through renewable sources and improving energy management solutions. So suppliers such as the Honeywell, Siemens, um, for example, have a strong building management service portfolio. Integration of such systems with their existing airport solutions will allow such companies to provide end-to-end -end airport integration and management services. These 10 trends, I am uh, going for, an, an, I mean, investigations, and as well as these are uh, the recent trends, uh, and they are following in the recent trends in the aviation industry. And we will see how the visualization from 2019. So, uh, major trends for the aviation security in uh, 2019. So, enhanced the direction technology, improving the screening process. So, the number of traffic rules has been increased, number of uh, passengers also uh, increased, the population is increased so that. The, uh, the digital boards and the digital, I mean, the, clearly they will give you oh, what are the air, I mean, uh, uh, air, uh, air routes are being operated and what is the uh, things, I mean, departure and arrival uh, signal has been uh, given to the passenger with so that the timing and other uh, things, uh, the delay in this delay of uh, passenger boarding will be reduced. The data and the artificial intelligence producing the insights. At the same time, the risk-based screening and increasing that will increase the efficiency. So we have to go for the screening. So the screening also by used by that biometric way, so that no need of standing in the queues and you can proceed further and boarding in the uh, airport. I mean, boarding in the aircraft. So a digital station as is a major trend for aviation security in 2019. The next one, risk-based screening for a more secure aviation network. The value of uh, risk-based screening, so the screening check also will be used with along with the uh, biometric ways. And uh, nowadays, there are a lot of uh, screening process has been taking place digitally. So uh, that, that uh, breathing time at the airport is reduced, and where the number, though the number of passengers has increased, so the uh, uh, digital screening is very, very useful to us for uh, the uh, recent trends in aviation industry. So looking forward to 2020 beyond and top trends for airports and aviations. Now we are going to introduce that after this one, the robotic assistance in uh, passenger for passengers. Uh, which will guide, which will take that uh, old people, which can they can use that uh, uh, the passenger transformations. Everything will be used by robotic assistants. So these sectors are now that emerging, and they are going for I mean emerging in all digitalized airports. The passenger centric solutions are also taken place in a in uh, 2020 and they are going doing that uh, for uh, advancement in this uh, passenger sites so liquids uh, are ready for takeoff so the liquids are ready for takeoff paperless and uh, trustworthy here comes the blockchain 
So the paperless work is there. So you can take on online uh, uh, ticketing and you can show it and boom. And at the same time, with your biometric and your uh, Wi-Fi, we can use it and uh, you can go, uh, get inside the airport. So that long queues will be reduced and the unnecessary delays uh, being, uh, for checking will be reduced. So the biometrics we are going to use in all over the places for including the aircraft takeoff, getting the uh, permission from ATC, everything will be take off through this biometrics only. Secured by design so that the airports will be secured with the digitally so that the digitalization will reduce the um, you can say there's a uh, prevention from the dangerous goods are moving inside to uh, go outside so that the hijacking problems will be sorted out. So up in the clouds, the unknown unmanned threat is reduced. So improving the air traffic control and destination green so that because of the green gas is we are going to use in a general way to because as that engine performance and the efficiency is increased that carbon dioxide emissions is very very less in that uh, forthcoming decades so in the airport go the predicting the impact of keeping a distance at security displacement as travel restrictions are slowly eased and airlines start to offer more regular connections airports are looking for ways how to implement improved hygiene standards and social distancing uh, guidance throughout the passenger journey without comprising security, efficiency, or profitability. So achieving this likely to be a key factor in gaining a competitive advance, advantage in the recovery phase. So next, the checkpoint CT scanners pave the way for the contactless checkpoint. I'm a checkpoint. It is rebuilding the passenger confidence in air travel, minimizing contact between the travelers and screeners, maximizing the efficiency and security, and reducing the delay time, enhancing the airport threat detection capabilities. So, uh, no goods, no uh, uh, this one, uh, uh, arms and ammunition, or any threat, uh, threatable or dangerous goods are uh, transporting inside the airport. So apart from all these things, uh, the insider's threat are uh, uh, earlier days we have uh, been reported with drugs. The airport employees have smuggled 20 tons of uh, cocaine over in the 18 year span. At the same time, the guns, the airport employees were arrested for gun smuggling at a major US airport in 2014 and explosive and airport uh, employees planned a terrorist attack using airport uh, supplies in 2013. So here, the lot of uh, uh, other things uh, like uh, digitalization, we have made it, but these problems, approximately 9,550 employees across more than 450 US airports and other 415 airports can use their credential to access and deliver the goods to secure areas with little to no additional screening. But because of these things, the uh, uh, drugs, guns and explosives have gone inside. So despite the fact that airport employees must pass background check, the last several years have seen many shockings because of that one only, and sometimes deadly. Examples of uh, misusing, many employees are misusing uh, their access to secure areas of an airport. So this should be reduced. So if you are having a digitalized uh, biometric way, so this passage will be reduced. Nowadays, we can, uh, that is, some investigations are going on. So. Uh, through these employees are only these uh, drugs and uh, guns and explosives are uh, 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 transforming from uh, yeah, airport to inside the aircraft. So the investigation is going on to uh, find out if any explosives or dangerous goods are inside the um, aircraft, they cannot enter inside the door. Because, because by using that uh, by, uh, isotopes and 
through that other sensors, they can able to find out that passengers are having this uh, this type of a uh, dangerous goods, or uh, sometimes that employees are skate inside the uh, aircraft will be. Uh, captured and it will be given a lot to the authorities so that the reduction in the dangerous goods moving inside the aircraft and the airport will be taken place. So in these recent days that insider threat will be reduced by using the digitalization. So now we can go for a critical financial issues and challenges faced by the aviation industry, cost controls, world economy, access to capital markets so the cost controls they have to uh, that industry is uh, facing a lot of problems because of that one only uh, airline and uh, many airlines is uh, closed down and uh, that world economy also one of the uh, main criteria to come to uh, give the uh, I mean, uh, financial crisis at the aviation industry the access to capital markets so that Financial things are playing a major role. So, irrational pricing, the pricing of uh, air ticketing on the uh, air routes, the insurance predictory, predatory action by a uh, major foreign company, major uh, airlines should be introduced. So, that will also will be uh, in a questionable way. That is, a uh, crisis is taking place, and foreign currency exposure carriers also. I mean, increasing the challenges faced by the industry. Fleet replacement and price. So the return amount, uh, if the passenger is not, if the uh, fleet replacement is taking place due to any delay or technical problems taking place in the aircraft. So yeah, passenger has to be uh, taken or uh, boarding at uh, uh, five-star hotels and the pricing of the ticket will be increasing and the revenue is going down because of the fleet replacement. Over capacity of the new aircraft, so the uh, passenger cannot, I mean, uh, the uh, aircraft will be in a dangerous position to uh, accommodate the financial problems. So the uh, uh, precautions, you have to take it for uh, the capacity of the new aircraft so that the over capacity will reduce the uh, ticketing prices. That means the capacity, nowadays we are using it with the 230 to, uh, 250 to 350 passengers. It should be the capacity of the passenger aircraft should be increased so that the revenue uh, revenue will be generating a, a good manner. At the same time, the fuel cost also will be reduced uh, for flying from one place to other place. The traffic also will be reduced because of the capacity has been increased. The cash flow and ability to industry losses and self-finance inconsistent profitability. So debt and equity ratios are going ups and down. The cost of funds and low so will uh, give that uh, critical financial issues to the aviation industry. The taxation yield on surplus funds. So which is uh, which will be more taxable incomes to the air force. I mean the, the airline industry, which also gives a financial crisis to aviation industry. The ownership issues and productivity and the labor reforms. So the problems uh, produced by the uh, laborers and the uh, uh, their salaries, the increment of the salaries also will create a financial crisis and the challenges are faced by the aviation industry. At the last, why airlines fail to achieve the success? So I have seen that two types one. What airlines? I am predicting this. Why airlines fails to achieve the success, and in which way it can be able to uh, go successfully? So, over expansion. They think that uh, the airline is going well, and they will expand in a uh, over expansion uh, beyond their capacity because of that it goes down. So, under the capitalization, so the capitalization market also. Uh, uh, increased much so the financial crisis will come inside so the problem will create to close down the airline industry so lack of flexibility and wrong leadership 
so wrong money and unable to obtain sustainable and competitive advantages failure to demonstrate that new growth and profitability these are all the uh, six points i've seen that airlines fail to achieve their success in the industry and stay long for the uh, uh, in this world to uh, to be a successful airlines in the industry so what are the airline how that airline can achieve their success so from the uh, failures we can able to reform that the solid airline business plan they should have and flexibility of advocating and that travel should be made and diversity good leadership steady and moderate growth strategies should not uh, well, i mean emerging and uh, evolving that we want that a uh, sudden growth in the industry so effective cost cutting strategies fleet common, uh, commonality and reasonable capital requirements and long term visions so the mainly the long term vision if you have then all these things will come with the uh, the success that is the once you are having a long term vision the good leadership you will you can able to hold and you can act as a good leadership in the aviator aviation industry you have to be uh, like a lion or a eagle to fly in the blue sky i can i completed up to here the recent trends in a uh, aviation industry and i have told you that what are the success i mean uh, that how the failure can able to uh, 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 you can able to uh, get failure at the same time how you can able to success uh, uh, will be a successful airliners from the uh, study of your uh, analysis in failures then now i am uh, for the next slide on what i'm going to give you the what are the uh, job opportunities in uh, aviation industry especially in india there are many types of airport based jobs in the aviation industry allowing you to work in a wide variety of roles some of those roles include pilot co pilot and air traffic controller aircraft and avionics mechanic airport managers transportation security screener air field operations specialists and aeronautical engineers here one by one we can go for it so flight attendants airline jobs in the in the case of the airline administrative support baggage handler operations agent aircraft fueler air fuel and power plant mechanics avionics technicians cabin maintenance service person regional sales manager airport equipment driver you have to know your what is your capacity and you can apply for, for this type of jobs and you can go for airline jobs other than that flight dispatcher ground and airport station attendant vehicle and equipment mechanic passenger service agent reservation sales agent cruise schedule coordinator airline station agent airline flight instructor aviation attorney the information systems human resources management airline food services aviation meteorologist ramp planner sales representative airline airline ticket agent airline marketing you other commercial pilot jobs major airlines in cargo and freight carriers corporate and agricultural pilot aerial applicator traffic reporting news and traffic news also we are helicopter pilots test pilots flight instructors ferry pilot and air taxi and sightseeing charges if you see this uh, commercial pilots so how they can able to improve their uh, positions so if they go that position will be increased from one by one so that after achieving your good uh, uh, good hours of flying you can able to reach up to the test pilots and flight instructors and ferries so airport jobs skycar assistant airport manager deputy director of aviation director airport engineer and planner concessions and airport food service airport guide ambassador and airport custodians service persons fixed base operator lines person fixed base operator manager and emergency services and ground support jobs 
So government jobs, if you want to go, that Federal Aviation Administration, that aviation, uh, BSc Aviation, BSc Aeronautical Sciences, and BBA in Airline and Airport Management, and MBA in Airline and Airport Management can able to achieve this type of a jobs. Transportation Security Administration, National Transportation Safety Board, Bureau of Land Management, and NASA, ISRO, DRDO, HAL, NAL, ADE, and Army, Navy, and Air Force, where that, I mean, air, I mean, aircrafts are available. Airlines, industry, resources, from private concerns related to aviation jobs, you can go for uh, Goya, Taneja. Taneja is having a separate airports and their flights, and Indigos and Tata groups also having this uh, airports and airlines and spices. Mistara, Mistara also uh, belongs to one of the uh, partnership with the uh, Tata groups and Cap Chimney. They are having their own airport and they are doing the investigations and analysis and they are doing the repairing works also, maintenance and repairing works also. So at the last, uh, I can give you that what an aviation person must require, the responsibility, actuality, cautious and safety and security, knowledge upgradation and updation and patience. If you have these five characteristics, you can fly in the sky. I am, I am completing my uh, lecture and I am very thankful to the management and the faculty who has arranged this uh, webinar. And I'm proud uh, to accept your university, I mean, uh, invitations. And uh, I am so glad and so happy uh, to give my presentations. And I am closing my presentation here itself. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. You have Thank clearly, you, you have clearly explained the recent trends in the industry uh, for, for everyone, which is the need of the art. Actually, so thank you for the knowledge sharing, sir. Thanks, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. You have covered almost all the aspects. Thank you. Ask, sir. What's that? Uh, it was very, very interesting, and you have covered all the aspects. Yes, sir. Thank, uh, thank you, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Can we close the meeting, sir? Or anything? Sir, sir, sir that is a word of thanks, sir. Oh, that will be there. Okay. Salute always keeps us remembering the situation and it will remind every moment to momentum the golden gift throughout the life. Now I request Professor R. Singhara Vadivelu, HOD, BSc and BBA department to envelop the vote of thanks. Good afternoon and a warm greetings to the most respected chief guest, Dr. G. Prabhagaran, most respected participants, students, and the staff from NGA group and other institutions all over India and abroad. My dear colleague, friends, to my dear students. First of all, before I begin, let me first thank you for showing interest in joining this webinar. I know that definitely this day was an expedition of knowledge. Initially, we started this webinar in a very simple way, but now we have got more than 500 participants all over the country, and we, have, we are proud to say that we even have participants from other countries also. On behalf of Nehru Group of Institutions and on behalf of our Nehru College of Aeronautics and Applied Sciences, I take my immense pleasure in thanking you all for, for participating in this webinar. First I wholeheartedly thank our managing trustee, Dr. and Advocate P. Krishna Das, and our CEO and Secretary, Dr. P. Krishna Kumar, CEO and Secretary of this renowned group of institutions in absentia, for being a moral support in all our endeavors. In, it is my privilege and honor to thank our today's resource person, the chief guest, Dr. Chief Prabhagaran, for sparkling his valuable time today. Sir, you have updated us all the relevant and recent trends in the aviation industry and the various job opportunities in aviation industry and in airlines airport. 
Thank you very much for your kind acceptance and your presence, sir. Thank you very much. My heartfelt thanks to all the participants from the various institutions. We have planned to conduct a series of seminars, webinars in this month. So we expect your participation in all the upcoming webinars. Next, I would like to thank Dr. B. R. Balaji, Dean Academic Affairs of Nehru College of Aeronautics and Applied Sciences. He is the one who encourages and motivated us in conducting this kind of aviation webinars. Thank you very much, sir. I would thank like you, to sir. Thank Dr. B. Suswami, sir, Professor Emeritus from MBA Department, and Mr. A. Ramesh Babu, the training manager of AIM and AIMT Department of joining this webinar and giving his full, their full support. I would like to thank the chief guest, Dr. G. Prabhakar, especially, that yes, immediately when we approached him, immediately he accepted and giving us the very good webinar. Thank you very much, sir, once again. And I thank all the principals of our sister colleges and all the HODs and all our faculties of Nehru Group of Institutions and Nehru College of Aeronautics and Applied Sciences, giving their full support and, the, and their presence here. Thank you very much, everyone and all. All the thank you very much for all the participants and special thanks to for the throat, uh, the participants from throughout India and from the international participants also participated. I thank once again all the participants. Thank you very much. Our special thanks to the coordinator, Aishan Professor Yelakia Madam, Yelakia M, and the MOC team members, Aishan Professor Vasiki Madam and Aishan Professor Abhishad Dhani Madam. They have arranged the webinar very nicely and it has given a great success. Thank you. And it is a, our great our great thanks to our Aishan Professor Sudamani from NIT who has arranged for the YouTube live arrangements and made the program very success. And everyone has participated because only the 250 were able to attend in the Google Meet and the remaining people all they have attended the YouTube and they got the intermissions nicely. Once again, I thank you everyone and all who have given the full support and for your nice participation. Thank you very much, everyone and all. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. You, sir. Uh, yeah. Thank you, sir. It's a grand success for you, sir. And a nation's culture resides in the hearts and in the souls of its people. So now let's all pay tribute to our mother India.
questions. Thank you. Thank you, one and all, for your active participation. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you, sir. Participants, you will receive your e-certificates to the registered mail within two, three days of working day. Two, three working days. Thank you. Hello, hello.